This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first thousand people to sign up with the link in the description will get their first two months for just 99 cents. Greetings, and welcome to Earthling Cinema. I am your host, Garrix Wormuloid. This week's artifact is It, based on the novel by the sovereign of intellectual property, King Stephen, and starring the cutest Skarsgardian of the galaxy. The film takes place in an alternate reality where Earth children rode bikes everywhere, known as the 80s. Our sort of protagonist is Bill Den Bro, who, despite his name, breaks the first rule of bro code when he lets an unemployed artist eat his brother. A year passes, and Bill's still butthurt about his dead brother. He's dead! So his loser friends search the septic tank with him, only to find it more barren than my first wife. A local hussy named Bev, short for beverage, joins the crew to up the diversity and the boy's blood pressure. And as stranger things start happening, the kids make a shocking discovery. The only haunted-looking house in town is haunted. That's where it lives. Turns out the artist is actually a boggart named Pennywise, whose preferred pronoun is it. Dad! When Pennywise totally screws with their analog PowerPoint, the kids try Plan A, walk into its trap house, since Bev probably took all their Plan B. And after successfully stabbing its head, they disband for no reason. That is, until Pennywise teen naps Bev to show her his latest installation. Bill and co. save her because they hate modern art and take turns punching it, even though they could have done that at literally any time. Pennywise goes down the pipes back to the Mushroom Kingdom, and the most rockin' summer ever ends, like all rockin' summers, with a blood oath. At its core, it is about battling fear and is not at all about child orgies. Pennywise lives in the sewers beneath Derry's surface, reflecting the subconscious nature of its attacks and how hard it is to find a good one bedroom. Famed psychopath Siggy Freudster would call this amalgamation of subconscious concerns into one representative token, condensation. I call it Dad. Dad? Ed's fear of disease is baked into this dude with eczema. The painting in Stan's father's office represents the pressure on Stan to learn how to read. The rabbi's son can't finish his own Torah reading. The bloody scene in Beverage's bathroom reflects her insecurities about her changing body as it's quickly losing carbonation. The film explores the conditions under which fear and evil may flourish. Pennywise finds a comfortable home in Derry because the adults are indifferent to the town's problems, like the high murder rate, constant amber alerts, or the lurking killer, childhood obesity. By feigning ignorance to these issues, the adults enable it, just as they allow bullying and racism to do its thing. The film suggests that being alone renders one more vulnerable to fear and to spending an entire day naked on the couch. Throughout the film, it attacks victims one-on-one, -on -one, cause it's not really into group stuff. The antidote to indifference and isolation is friendship. Okay, it's AXT 4000D. The losers are only able to defeat it by facing it together and sharing their emotional burdens, even though all they had to do was hit it with a stick. When Bev decides to go all Terry Schiavo, it's Ben's gesture of friendship that snaps her out of it. A classic true love's first base. Like many King Stephen IPs, it is about coming of age to legally bone. The film is an allegory for the transition from childhood to young adulthood, also known as the hood. In the beginning, the characters are helpless children, controlled by their overbearing parents and the bullies who terrorize them. You're trapped. Well, at least now you'll smell better. They are painfully aware of characteristics that make them different. For Billy, it's his oral. You're, you're, you're hairy. For Ben, it's everything except his personality. And for Mike, it's being the only black character in the movie. We're all afraid of something. But as the children unify and battle the monster, they learn to assert power over their own lives, graduating from helpless children to helpless teens. Despite its uplifting message, the film makes it clear that evil, much like herpes, can never be eradicated without a ray gun. Just as Pennywise will inevitably wake up in 27 years, This stuff seems to happen every, every 27, 27 years. years. Evil such as racism and abuse will eventually rise up and get a hit movie too. And it did. In the 2075 box office hit, Racism and Abuse Save Christmas. For Earthling Cinema, I'm Garrick Swermuloid. What goes up? must come clown.
If there's anything we get asked time and time again, it's Jared. How can you still be Garrix's intern after all this time? And it's actually a funny story. Late last year, Garrix promoted me to graphic designer, despite having no experience whatsoever. Attempting to airbrush his eyebrows, I failed miserably, even though I could have used Skillshare, the online learning community with thousands of classes. The final product was a nightmare, and knowing Garrix, you can probably guess what happened next. I was fired, lost my salary, and was forced to sleep on the streets and eat used napkins to survive. That is, until I got a premium membership on Skillshare and unlimited access to college-grade courses on skills that would allow me to get hired back. And since a subscription is less than $10 a month, I took all the courses I would need. Dynamic brand identity, fundamentals of DSLR photography, and mastering logo design. Armed with all these skills, I asked Garrix for my job back, and he overwhelmingly said no. So I groveled till my hands went numb, and he reluctantly hired me back as an intern. So don't make the same mistakes I did and sign up for Skillshare at skl.sh slash earthling6. The first thousand people to use the promo link in the description will get their first two months for just 99 cents, which is less than a McDouble, so come on already, give them your money.